Hello children, hope all of you are fine. So today we are going to read lesson uh, 7 of class 6 literature and the name of the chapter is All the All American Slurp. Okay children, so today we will begin with this chapter and this chapter is written by Lindsay Namoika. So first let's know about her. She was born in China and as a young girl she came to United States of America. And she used to write so much of samurai stories and uh, like she always wrote that kind of stories. And all her series usually dealt with the humorous experience. Like when a Chinese family moves from one place from China to other area, like she moved from China to America, then what all, what all experiences she faced, that's all we'll be doing with this chapter. As we know that uh, we all live in India, and uh, we have different cultures, we have different eating habits, we have different table manners, isn't it? Even living in this place, we are uh, so much different uh, difference is there. But then we all know unity, we have unity in diversity. As a result, we are able to survive in this area. So let's see what are we going to read here. When Lindsay Namoyaka moved with her parents from China to United States of America, they noticed many differences in the habits and cultures of the two countries. Read on to find what happens when she and her family attend an American dinner party. So she, she just moved with her parents from China to USA and uh, there was definitely from one country to another totally difference will be there not just in their culture tradition but in their table manners and the habits isn't it so what all experiences she gains when she is just invited to one of the american dinner party and definitely we are going to enjoy this happens with us also children like if we are invited to an unknown place or uh, we don't know other people's culture we definitely will make mistake so that's that's how we gain experience in our life the first time our family was invited to dinner in america we disgraced ourselves while eating celery we had immigrated from china to this country and during our early early days here we had a hard time with american table manners so first let us know what does disgrace mean. It means feeling ashamed. They felt ashamed while eating celery. We'll get to know with the proceeding story definitely. Like how they made a mistake while eating celery. And as we all know that they have immigrated from China to this new country. So definitely they were facing a little trouble with the new area's table manners. In China... We never ate celery or any other kind of vegetable in its raw form. We always had to disinfect the vegetables in boiling water first. When we were presented with our first relish tray, the raw celery caught us unprepared. So, uh, the thing told here is that in China, people usually don't eat celery or any other vegetable in its raw form. Raw form, kacha. We don't eat it. Uh, they don't eat it in raw form. Instead, what they used to do, they used to boil it a little bit. Okay, they used to boil it a little bit so that the substance become more cleaner as well as it uh, kills all the bacteria in this, uh, in the vegetables and all the germs also. So, when they went to one of the families, okay, they went to one of the families dinner party. So, what they found that uh, there was a tray coming towards them. But in that tray, they found the raw sal celery and they were totally not knowing that what, what we are going to do with that. Okay. We had been invited to dinner by our neighbors, the Gleesians. After arriving at the house, we shook hands with our host and packed ourselves onto the sofa as our family of four sat stiffly in a row. My younger brother and I stole glances at our parents for a clue as to what to do next so we got to know that uh, they were invited by the gleesons in the in the dinner party and uh, when they they arrived to their house definitely they shook hand the greetings and all they exchanged and after that they went to the sofa and packed themselves 
as we all know that when we go to a new place we definitely find our elders or our known ones so that we know what to do next isn't it we we definitely face this in our phase uh, in our lives like if we are small if if our parents take us to a new place what we do we think in our mind that do i to don't know anybody what should i do will it be okay or not Uh, should i go and take the food or should i not so what we do we store glances we just have a look at our parents that uh, should i do this or not like like we just take we just take a look at them okay like secretly looking at the parents okay that what should be done next mrs gleason offered the salad tray to mother the tray looked pretty with its tiny red radishes curly sticks of carrots and long slender and stalks of pale green celery do try some of the celery mrs len she said it's from a local farmer and it's sweet mother picked up one of the green stalks and father followed the suit i picked up the stalk and my brother did too so there we sat each with a stalk of celery in our right hand so after the offerings were made the first thing that came towards them was a salad tray and as you can see in the picture also the tray looked definitely very pretty tiny radishes were there carrots were there and can you see the explanation of the author curly sticks of carrots long slender stalks of pale green celery yes the explanation is very nice when you read it even minute details the imagination can be created in our mind so as we all know when we go to anything any place new place we definitely try to copy our elders so that same was done by the narrator here mrs gleason kept smiling would you like to try some of the dip mrs len it's my own recipe sour cream and onion flakes with a dash of tabasco sauce so can you see the way of speaking definitely uh, a new place so they they don't know much about each other so they are trying to have a conversation with each other isn't it so she is offering the dip okay and what what the dip basically was made of the dip was made of sour cream and onion flakes and there was a tabasco sauce now you may ask me ma'am what is tabasco sauce so tabasco sauce is a spicy red sauce made from pepper okay like chili kind of thing it's very uh, spicy for one person to eat like most chinese don't care for dairy how did the narrator uh and in those days i wasn't even ready to drink fresh milk sour cream sounded perfectly revolting our family shook our head in unison like they definitely didn't like uh, dairy products so then how they are going to like the sour cream so as soon as the offering was made they definitely refused they all just shook their head that no we definitely don't want this mrs gleason went off with the relish tray to the other guest and we carefully watched to see what they did everyone seemed to eat the raw vegetables quite happily so yes they were just having an observation of what other people are doing having a look at the other guest and they found what that all were very happy eating that raw celery definitely if you have not eaten that thing you will face you will think in your mind that whether is it it is good or not mother took a bite of her celery crunch it's not bad she whispered the father took a bite of his celery crunch yes it is good he said looking surprised i took a bite and then my brother did too crunch crunch it was more than good it was delicious raw celery has a slight sparkle a zingy taste that you don't get in the cooked celery when mrs gleason came around with a relish tray we each took another stalk of celery except my brother he took two so now after eating it they definitely enjoyed the dish because they were they never tasted it in raw form no so this was their first time and they found it very tasty and little exciting taste okay like we make up our mind isn't it we just uh, 
think in our mind that yes from from the childhood i am eating in this manner so this is only the procedure to cook the food but this isn't true children there are many a times that you will find that uh, in some places the dishes are made in a different manner but still you are going to love the taste so you cannot judge it beforehand just give it a try there was only one problem long strings ran through the length of the stop and they got got caught in my teeth when i help my mother in the kitchen i always pull the strings out before slicing the celery so uh, this was all served in a raw form so one problem definitely occurred with them that uh, the strings as you can see in the picture the strings they all are in the length of this stop okay but when you are eating it in raw form no definitely this gets stuck in your teeth so when when they used to cook celery what they used to do children they always used to pull those strings out so when they are slicing the celery these things were definitely take taken out okay uh, one more example i can give you regarding drums drumstick i hope you all have heard this name in our language it is said as chewing <laughs> i don't know what is what it is called in your language but then uh, i hope you all know the word drumstick it is even used in sambar and all okay so drumstick when if it is not peeled properly no children the outer layer is not peeled properly definitely the strings which is running along the length of that drumstick will get stuck in your teeth okay the same goes with the celery as well it used to get stick in that uh, stick in in the teeth i pull the strings out of my stop zip 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 my mother brother followed the suit zip zip now they all are just taking out all the uh, that uh, string part out of that celery because it was getting caught in their teeth no so they all are following the suit and they are doing their own job and they are not looking all around okay they all are just uh, doing this taking out this yes taking out the strings of the celery and they are not noticing all around the the whole family okay so what happened next suddenly i realized that there was a dead silence except for the zipping looking up i saw that the eyes of everyone in the room were on our family mr and mrs gleason their daughter meg was my friend and their neighbors the battles they were all staring at us as we busily pulled the strings of our celery so they all were busy doing their stuff but they never noticed what other people are doing all were just keeping quiet and having a look at them what are they doing <laughs> okay they all were in a uh, confused state what is going on at that place okay that wasn't the end of it Mrs Gleason announced that the dinner was served and invited us to the dining table it was lavishly covered with platters of food but we could not see any chairs around the table so we helpfully carried the over some dining chairs and sat down all the other guests just stood there so first embarrassment done was they were all zipping they were all pulling the strings out of the celery and the second was when the dinner was announced they went to that place and uh, since they could not find any <laughs> dining chair like we all have the habit no everyone has a different eating habits like in india we have uh, we serve the plates okay first the ground is covered then uh, uh, mats are put and then the person sits on the mat and then the food is served on the leaf plates isn't it this is all our indian tradition but there in china people usually have a dining table and then in the dining chair they will be sitting and having their food but here since this was america people usually don't follow the suit in parties like now we are also adapting the same thing western cultures when we go to any of the party we definitely don't find chairs there the buffet system we find isn't it that also we are going to read in the buffet system children the the person who is going to eat need to serve themselves as much as they want they can take and then they can stand away from the place and they can have their dinner or lunch whatever it is so what they did because they could not see the chairs they all carried the chairs with them and there they sat all the others were 
just standing up there looking at them. Mrs. Gleason bent down and whispered to us, This is a buffet dinner. You need to help yourself to some food and eat it in the living room. So now she is, uh, is advising the family that, uh, yes, this is a buffet dinner. People are uh, uh, taking themselves the food and eating in the living room. Now what they did, a family beat a retreat back to the sofa as if chased by enemy sol soldiers. For the rest of the evening, too ashamed to go back to the dining table. I nursed a bit of potato salad on my plate. So as you, when you attend, uh, uh, you may find this, okay, you may have experienced also in your life. If you have gone to a party, uh, definitely so many people will come. It is all crowded. And if you find one of the chairs empty, what you are going to do? <laughs> Please think in your mind what you are going to do. The first instinct that comes in your mind is to just, just grab it, whatever it may take, run as fast as you can and just try to grab that chair and be seated. Okay. So that's that also went inside the head of the family, Lynn's family. So what they did, as soon as they just served themselves, they just came back to the sofa so that they can get the seat back there, okay? As if someone is attacking them. And they all after that became ashamed of what they did. Like nobody else was doing the same thing. And they just ate the potato salad and they were not going back because of the embarrassment. So what happened next? Next day, Meg and I got onto the school bus together. I wasn't sure how she would feel about me after the spectacle of our family has made themselves at the party. But she was just same as usual. And the only reference she made to the party was, I hope you and your folks got enough to eat last night. You certainly didn't take very much. Mom never tries to figure out how much food to prepare. She just puts everything on the table and hopes for the best. So uh, we all have uh, this thing definitely we have in our mind, isn't it children? That uh, when we are embarrassed or ashamed of something, we feel we keep it in our mind. And uh, that thing just goes on and on on a replay button in our head. But Meg wasn't that kind of person. She was. She never felt anything bad about it. But uh, as we know, Lens, Lancy was definitely feeling bad regarding that. That uh, they all made. They were all ashamed of all the things they did there. But uh, she never made any reference to that. Uh, Meg only said that you all never ate anything. Little bit only you tried. And uh, as we all know, that all our mothers uh, definitely prepare food in a large quantity and she puts everything on the table and hopes for the best that yes definitely our guests are going to like it isn't it in our family also yours as well that if any guest is going to arrive at your house what your mother does she'll cook and cook all the varieties she's going to cook on that day and she's going to serve it for the guest and uh, she doesn't know how much to cook as she wants that the food never gets uh, lesser okay so she does in that manner. I began to relax. The Gleason's dinner party wasn't so different from a Chinese meal after all. My mother also puts everything on the table and hopes for the best. So she finds one similarity between the Gleason's and the Lenses uh, family. The one thing that, common, that was common was that the mother, they put so much of effort and then she hopes for the best that everything goes well in any of the party. So this is just the one part of the story of the narrators, um, uh, the all Americans love children. And the next part was also there. But in your book, only this much was there. The story continued. Okay. And within that, the narrator's family was invited to Gleason's. Okay. And Gleason's definitely will find it difficult to eat with chopstick, isn't it? Chinese people eat with chopstick. I hope you all have seen chopstick. Yes, they used to eat uh, noodles with the help of that. They felt as uncomfortable as the narrator's family had felt at their place. The narrator discovered, to her pleasant surprise, that some things were common between the two families. If the Chinese slurped their soups, the American slurped their milkshakes. Now you will ask me, ma'am, what is slurp? Okay, when you are trying to drink something, what voice you make? <laughs> I hope you understood what I meant to say. You try to 
slurp it. You try to drink in that manner. A little loud noise you make when you drink those things. So this was also a similarity. Definitely uh, we will face problem if we go to a new place. But then uh, we are meant to adapt ourselves. We'll learn something new. So as a whole I can see that uh, Narita never faced any trouble. Instead she learned every day. Isn't it? She learned that how celery is prepared in uh, America. And even Gleason's family also learned that uh, how to eat with a chopstick. There are different cultures. But we need to respect each and every culture, each and every tradition, each and every food habits. So I hope you like the video. Thank you very much children.